Here we're going to cover a couple of new terms. One is terminal PD and one is internal resistance and both of these relate to a source of EMF such as a battery, a cell, uh, a generator, a photovoltaic cell, something like that. Um, and the, the internal resistance is the key one, that's what leads to this uh, secondary term, the terminal PD. So if we've got some power supply, be it a cell or a generator or something like that, then it is made out of stuff. And anything that is made out of stuff has some electrical resistance. So um, it, unless it's made entirely out of superconductors, and we don't tend to get too many uh, voltage sources, too many EMS uh, made out of superconductors, any battery is going to be made out of something and therefore has a have a resistance. So uh, if we sketch out a circuit, the ideal case of what we would have is a cell connected up to a resistor. And this would have some voltage, this would have some resistance, and the current would be I, and is given by V divided by R. Uh, but in reality, we have something a bit different. So because this actually has some uh, internal resistance, what we do is where we have this voltage source, we imagine this is joined up in series with some resistor. And then we carry on to the rest of the circuit. Uh, so this uh, section at the top here where we've got the cell and the resistor together, this is essentially this bit up here. So this is the ideal case where we've got no or negligible internal resistance. This is what we get in real life where actually we do have some internal resistance. Uh, so this is the EMF of the cell and the internal resistance. Uh, and so we're going to uh, identify those with a couple of symbols uh, and also label the load resistance as well. Uh, so here the EMF will label like so the internal resistance will label as an R, and the external resistance will label with an uppercase R. So lowercase R for the internal resistance, the resistance of the materials that make up this cell, plus a lower uppercase R uh, for the resistance of the external circuit, or for the resistance of whatever it is that this cell is connected up to. And so because this and this resistor are in series, the total resistance is just going to be R plus R. Uh, and so if we wanted to determine the current flowing in this using Ohm's law, uh, we know that current is given by voltage, in this case that's the EMF, divided by the total resistance, so R plus R. And this leads us to the first equation which we use when we're discussing uh, internal resistances. So from this we get to that the EMF of this voltage source, the EMF of this cell, is equal to the current flowing in the circuit multiplied by the sum of the internal and the external resistance. Uh, so, because this internal resistance has some resistance and it has some current flowing through it, it will have some voltage associated with it, a voltage drop. Uh, so there is a potential difference across this resistor inside. And so if we were to connect a couple of leads to the exterior of the battery, so this and this is the exterior of the battery, because this internal resistance is integral uh, to this cell as a whole, we can't stick a lead here uh, because this, this cell is part of this resistor. So if we were to take a multimeter or a voltmeter and stick the two terminals across here, we would not see this total EMF. We would see the difference between the EMF and this terminal PD. Uh, and so what we don't actually get is the full EMF to power the circuit. We lose some of these volts. And so this here, this voltage drop across the internal resistance, we refer to as the lost volts. Uh, and the internal resistance, uh, the, the internal resistance multiplied by the current is going to tell us what this is. So the uh, terminal PD is given by the uh, EMF 
less this voltage and that voltage is equal to the current times the internal resistance. Uh, so the terminal potential difference if we wanted to work that out so what's the total uh, kind of net EMF the voltage left over presented to the rest of the circuit is given by this EMF minus the internal resistance and that is given that gives us the terminal potential difference so the potential difference at the terminals of this cell and we'll rearrange this to give us EMF is equal to the terminal potential difference plus the lost volts. So here we've got the lost volts, here we've got the terminal potential difference, and here we've got the EMF. Uh, so often this is just replaced with yet another V, and so we can also write this as E is V plus IR. So these are the two s equations which we're going to use uh, when we're discussing the internal resistance of real uh, power supplies because they are made of stuff and so they do have a resistance. Uh, so let's try a short question. We've got a cell with EMF 1.5 volts, has an internal resistance of uh, one and a half of 0.5 ohms, uh, and it's connected to a 22 ohm resistor. Determine the terminal PD of the cell and the current in the circuit. So we'll start off by sketching a diagram. We've got our cell which is 1.5 volts as the EMF and that's joined up with the internal resistance of 0.5 ohms and then this lot is connected up to the external resistor which is 22 ohms uh, so we can th this bit at the top remember this is what we're saying this is our cell and it has this EMF and this internal resistance. So to work out the current, the first thing we're going to use is the one that reads the EMF is equal to the current times the total resistance of the circuit. So the external resistance plus the internal resistance. So uh, if we rearrange that for the current, the current is the EMF over R plus R, which is 1.5 over 22.5 and that gives us a current of 0 0.067 amps. Uh, the terminal potential difference, we're going to move back to that second equation we had. Uh, so we said that the EMF is also given by the terminal potential difference plus the current times the internal resistance. So the terminal PD plus the loss volts gives us this. This is uh, basically Kirchhoff's second law again. So if we imagine coming around this circuit, this EMF, this voltage source in, must equal all of the PD, so the voltage is out of the circuit. So we've got uh, the terminal potential difference, which is the voltage dropped across here, uh, the external load, so this terminal potential difference, plus the voltage dropped across the internal resistance, which is the IR. So the EMF is equal, the sum of the EMS is equal to the sum of the PDs. Uh, but anyway, back to this. So if we want to find the terminal PD, uh, then that's the terminal PD is equal to the EMF less the current times the resistance, or the EMF less the lost volts. So that's going to be 1.5 minus the 0 0.067 amps times 0.5 ohms. And when we work that out, we get a value of 1.467 volts. So in this circuit, we would have said that there was 1.5 volts across this resistor if we hadn't heard of internal resistance yet. But because of this internal resistance, in this case, what we get is actually a little bit less than 0.5 volts. Uh, and so we see that um, if we've got a really large current here, then the uh, if we've got a really large current here, then the terminal potential difference that we get from the cell is actually going to be quite significantly smaller than the EMF. Or similarly, if the, we've got a very high internal resistance, then we're going to have a large lost volts here, which means a much smaller terminal PD. 
So when we're working at high resistance power supplies or at very high currents, this factor of the internal resistance of the power supplies becomes quite significant.